Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome again, my friends, to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, inviting you to pray with us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this time to open your word as we study the seven last plagues. Please help us to understand and, and to be able to be prepared to go through this time of trouble with Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes, indeed. We are having, we are heading to a big time of trouble as never seen according to the Bible before. But you know what? The good news is, it's always a good news in the gospel, isn't it? In the Bible. Matthew 24, and I know we're going to go back to our script, so to speak. But Matthew 24, look at this, what it says. Matthew 24, I believe, is going to have a, a, a double fulfillment, a second fulfillment, so to speak. Matthew 24, verses 29, I believe it is. Quickly, let's go there. And you can read it, my brother Patrick, since you are right there. Okay. 24, verse 29. Yes. 29 and 30. Can Ma you read it, please? Matthew 24, mm -hmm. verse 29 says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days mm -hmm. shall the sun be darkened, mm -hmm. and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So while we are, we are sharing with the, our audience about the, the seven last plagues and all these things, and Jesus has spoke about tribulation that's going to come, but we always have to see the, the, the good news in the Bible. The, what is the good news? The tribulation coming, mm -hmm. yes, like a, it was in the past. Can you help me out? If you look at this carefully, you yeah. have, we talked about in the past the fulfillment of the dark day of the sun, moon, and stars. Mm -hmm. yeah. It took place prior to 1844. Right. And now, so we're looking at Matthew 24, 29. The tribulation that Jesus talks about in the context of the chapter is dealing with the tribulation took place under the early Christian persecution right. for 1260 five, for 12, years. That's right. Then he says, immediately after the tribulation day, so the sun be dark and moon should not give her light. We know that the sun was darkened on May 19, 1780. That was written in the, it's even written in the world's almanac for that right. matter right. as a dark day. Mm -hmm. And then we know that the moon became, uh, became as blood the, the next night. Right. And then we know the stars fell from uh, heaven. May 19... May 19, 1780. No, November, November 30. November, no. November 13th, 1833, we yeah. had the stars. That the fell stars, from heaven. Okay. Right. Okay. So I'm just saying, the sun should be darkened, the moon should not give her light, the stars shall fall from heaven. And then it says, immediately, at, right after that, it talks about the coming of the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. But we know in context, Jesus hasn't come yet. Yeah, you, you, you're talking about, by the way, that tribulation, the papal... The papal, the pap the pap the tribulation came under papal power. Right, okay, right. for the 1260 years, years. Right. from 538 now, to 1798. Now, we know okay. that the papacy had been in existence, or the Roman Catholic Church had been in existence before 538. Mm -hmm. But the actual time of their established power of a church and state power to be able to persecute those who were dissenting from her doctrines, mm -hmm. that took place at that t around that time, 538 right. to 1798. Okay, but can we see a second fulfillment on this prophecy of Jesus? Over here? Yes, we can see a second fulfillment because in the last days, in Revelation chapter 6, yeah. go to Revelation chapter 6 with me, mm -hmm. and I want to show you that there are souls crying under the altar, right, right, and right. God, gives, a, God gives, them a, gives them consolation, but he tells right. them something that's future for our time. Right, right, right. In Revelation chapter 6, looking here at verse... Uh, Eight, no, wait a minute, yeah, uh, no, nine, no, 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 nine. nine, Revelation 9, yeah. 6, 9, mm -hmm. notice what it says here, it says here, it says, and when I heard, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, mm -hmm. and for the testimony which they held, mm -hmm. 
And they cried aloud with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true? Now listen carefully what they're asking for. Do us not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on, on, on the earth. Now they're asking for judgment, right? Mm -hmm. right? Because they've been wrongly accused and falsely killed and put in prison under false pretenses and, and yeah. suffered. And this question is asked as if the judgment was still future. Yes. And right. so this question is being asked before 1844. And, yeah. and of course, this cried, so but, to speak, but, but this, the this, souls crying and the altar, it, it, it's a symbolic language. It's, it's symbolic talking, language of God's okay? people, just right. like Abel's blood cried from the ground. Right, right. It's dealing with the <laughs> idea that, okay. uh, that, that, that the life of the individuals, mm -hmm. God is not going unnoticed about people losing their lives, mm -hmm. being innocent. Right, right. All right, or falsely accused for that matter. Yeah, can, can okay. I give another Bible reference based on the tribulation ahead? Okay, wait a minute. One more, one more point. One more. I just want to bring okay. one more point out. Yeah. It says, "How long, O Lord, holy and true, thou judge and avenge our blood?" Mm -hmm. um, it says, "On them that dwell on the earth." Verse eleven. Mm -hmm. And white robes were given them, mm -hmm. and every oh, one yeah. of them, it says, and it which did they should rest from their little season. Now watch this last part. Mm -hmm. um, this is going to the future, mm -hmm. to until their fellow servants mm -hmm. also and their brethren uh, that should be killed okay. as they were should be fulfilled. Oh, huh. yeah. Now, so this is, after, this, this, in other words, the Bible's telling you that there's another tribulation coming. Right. Now, when we read Daniel 12, 1, it says at that time, Michael shall what? Stand, Stand up. up. And there shall be a what? Time of trouble. So the, uh, I've never seen it never seen before. So the Bible is foretelling a time of trouble in which the rest of God, the fellow brethren mm -hmm. and servants will be also going through a time of persecution. Right. We have been talking also about Revelation 14, 8 through 11, about you know, those who will be receiving the mark of the beast, but there will be a remnant that instead of receiving the mark of the beast, they will be receiving what I call the mark of Jesus Christ. Oh, the seal, the of, seal God. of God. Mm -hmm. The seal of the living God. Uh -huh. Revelation 24. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Um, but maybe mm -hmm. if we can... If yeah. you can go to Revelation 20, yeah. verse 4. Yeah. Uh -huh. Brother Pacha, you go ahead. Um, right. I'm just thinking about that verse in Daniel. Uh -huh. uh, it comes after Michael stands up, which would mean the time when he finishes his priestly ministry and becomes um, king of kings and, and is ready to return to the earth. Mm -hmm. And that will be the time of the seven last plagues. Mm -hmm. And that will be, I think, what this is talking about the time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. But before Christ comes, uh, and there's, there still might be a time of persecution then when God's people well, would be killed. It, it, the Bible shows it's going to oh. be that because, now remember, Revelation 6 took us to the aspect that there's a future time coming when their fellow, bro fellow brethren will be killed as they were. Now, as they were, it's talking about the martyrs who were killed during the 1260-year period. Mm -hmm. But now in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, we read about a group of people who were in our time yeah. mm -hmm. who got the victory but also had been killed. Listen yeah. carefully. I saw thrones, and they, that sat upon, and they that sat upon them. Judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded mm -hmm. for the witness of Jesus. Now, if you stop right there for me, you say, now, you see, this is talking about the martyrs back in the days of the 1260, but no, listen a little closer, listen no. closer, beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, this is going back to the third angel's message in Revelation right. 14, 9. A uh, prophecy for this end time. For end time. Right, right. Uh, it says here, the beast, it says here, would not worship the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. This is the same language of Revelation 14, 9. So this tells us that this is a, this is a group of people that's going to be living in our time. Uh, with the, with the during message the time, with, of present during, truth message on the third angel message. During the time when Sunday observance, observance will, will be enforced. enforced by the state. That's right. Okay. So the that's Bible already tells us it's going to be a persecution. There's going to be a time of even beheading. That's, the, that's one of the many reasons that we cannot say, we cannot agree with some friends, Catholic theologians, that they want to apply this prophecy, even Revelation 17, about the woman and the beast, uh, about the Roman, the pagan Rome, they say. That's the pagan Rome. It cannot be the pagan Rome. Why? Because the pagan Rome already came and finished. Gone. It finished. came and went in, <laughs> into the 
uh, finished their existence in the uh, fourth century, the fourth century. So it cannot be applied to pagan Rome. The only, the only institution that can be applied is the institution that came out of Rome, okay? Came out of the city of the seven hills, as Revelation 17 explained. And yes, the kings on the earth with everybody will join, will join to them, and then that's what's going to bring a persecution as never seen before. Many people think that you, you guys must be crazy. How can a loving system, a system that uh, do so many good things, can turn again, you know, into a, to be a persecuted power? Well, hold on. What does it say in Daniel 8.25? Let, let's read it, please. Can you read Daniel 8.25? 8.25, yeah. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. By what type of message and peace. attitude, you know, things? By peace. By, by, by peace. peace. By talking about peace, by talking about let's unite everybody because, you know, we are all children of God. Let me tell you, my friends, there will be a time in the future whoever will not be united under those man-made traditions and doctrines, the Bible says, not me, will be persecuted again. I think the verse that we read where many would be beheaded um, hmm. For the Revelation image, for 20, the verse 24. Would verse be, four. The parallel would be found in Daniel 11, 44, which mm -hmm. is two verses before Daniel 12, verse 1. Okay. And it says, But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Right. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. Yeah. And how do, did that system destroy God's people in the past? Because history repeats. We have been yeah. starting. Uh, to persecution. To, by using who? Yeah, by, by persecution. Use, by using, by state, using what? Using the power, state. Power yeah. the state. Mm -hmm. Can you hold it right there? It's very important. Okay. We'll be right back. Hi, friends. I'd like to introduce you to a special book that we have available. It's the story of Pastor Rafael Perez's journey from preparing to be a priest in the Roman Catholic Church and how God worked very providentially in his life to turn him from that decision to following Jesus in the light of present truth. If you've been blessed by the Eternal Gospels program, we want to invite you to receive our new book entitled From Babylon the Great to the Eternal Gospel. It is the personal testimony of our speaker and director, Rafael Perez. But more than this, if you want courage, if you want strength, this personal testimony of this 150 page book will give you insights into why God is calling many women out of Babylon. And if you'd like to receive it today, just call the number at the bottom of your screen and ask for offer 777. That's offer 777. Why seven? Because the seventh day is the Sabbath. Why seven? Because the Sabbath was sanctified. Why seven? Because the final issues in this great controversy is between the Sabbath and Sunday. That is my journey. I hope and pray that you are going to order the book right now from Babylon the Great to the Eternal Gospel. May God bless you all. going to share with us yes, something I, very important. I want to bring that in Romans 13, for instance. Now, this text applies to us, a, a, Christian, a Christian, obeying the laws of the land and the government. Yeah. Mm. And it says, let every soul be subject to a higher powers, mm. for there is no power but of God. The powers that are, but it says here, the powers that are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Mm. Now this is, in, this is in contact with those who would resist to seek to be disobedient to the laws of the land. Mm. Now this is, and it applies, but also 
the Christian to a Christian, it applies only up to a certain point. And it, that means that law, as long as the laws are lands, there's not conflict with the law of God. That's when it conflicts with the law of God, then we are to serve God rather than men, and we are to look to that higher power and not to the powers that be. Now, if the powers that be are corrupted and they come into a false unity, then the Bible shows that we must obey the laws of God above the laws of man. I mean, Acts 5.29, can you read it, please? But before we go there, I just want to... But we're not to... finished. I'm, we've been oh, finishing. Oh, 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 you're oh. finished? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Because it says here, to receive damnation, for the rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of, that power, of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have the praise of the same. For he is a minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he that is a minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. But now we're coming to a time where the, the, where the issues of morality are being turned upside down. To the point now that people will call good evil and is now being legislated as such and evil is being called good. Isaiah 5 verse 20. Okay. Isaiah 5 verse 20. Can you read that for me a minute? Because I want you to see. So now what we're going to have is we're going to have people accusing those who would do good and follow conscientiously the word of God and, and try to stay in harmony with society as long as society didn't conflict with the moral, with the moral, with, with the moral code of God's law. That's going to be looked upon as evil. And therefore, legislation is going to be passed against those who would obey God hmm. rather than men to do that which is good, but do that which is right morally in the eyes of God. Hmm. Isaiah 5 verse 20 says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness. This is what's happening right now. We're, putting, yeah. we're seeing it taking place in the nation and in our society. Well, now we're putting darkness for light and light for darkness. Well, not only in the nations, even in churches, unfortunately. Yes, in churches as well. And this because is, and this is it, really going to apply because, there. Because when you teach that the commandments of God has been nailed on the cross, I mean, remember, 1 John 3, 4 said that that's how we know what sin is. It's by the, by the law, because sin is the transgression of the law. So it is an evil thing to tell congregations and people, oh, you don't have to worry about going into open sins, I mean, meaning, you know, transgress God's law, because it was nailed on the cross. Or, when, when that holy law was written with the finger of, of God in rock, wow. in a rock, you cannot... Or, Nail or, a rock. Or, 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 or those who now advocate that there's no such thing as sin, right. or that sin is yeah. what you think it is. Right. That's as even... though the Bible has no definition of what sin is. The right. Bible tells us that whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For right. sin is a transgression of the law. Right. So therefore, God's law is the standard that reveals what sin is. Where there is no law, there is no sin. Right, right. So therefore, to say that sin is whatever you think it is, that's, right. that, 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 that's, that's absurd. The word of God is very clear. Now, the question is, do you as Christians believe that the Bible in itself is still absolute? Right, That's another question. The reason too. why yeah. people have no definition of sin anymore is because of the doctrine of evolution, where there's no God, no judgment. Everything's here by chance, pure chance. And so there's no sin, no good, right. no, no but, values but, but, at all. But Pastor Barry just brought another good point, too. Sadly so-called theologians today, they know who they are. Yes. They're trying to make out of the Bible, you know, whatever you want to the interpret same. it, whatever you, it doesn't matter how you want to see it. You, you see it that way, fine for you. Yeah. I see it my way, it's fine too. No, or, or so, it's the same ecumenical, it's the same ecumenical alliance man. talk that says, if you love Jesus and I love Jesus, we all on the same page. Right, right. Well, that would be true, if Je but Jesus says some things very interesting. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, Jesus is the way, but the way is a road or a path. Amen. So Christ is the path or that road. Is that right? Yeah. There's only one path to heaven, and that, heaven, that path is with Jesus. The but, true then, Jesus. but what way does God lead? Does God just lead any way? 
The Bible says in Proverbs 8.20, I lead in the way of righteousness. Amen. So I lead in the way of righteousness. But what is righteousness? Psalms 119, 172. Mm -hmm. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. Amen. So God's commandments are righteousness. He leads in the way of his commandments. Mm -hmm. So the commandment says very clearly that we are to remember the Sabbath day. The commandment says that we are not to kill, commit adultery, and all the rest. Therefore, the Ten Commandments becomes the standard of righteousness and the way in which Christ leads. Amen. Amen. You want to say something? I was going to say the same thing happened in Christ's day, calling evil good and good evil, right. putting light for darkness, because when Jesus was healing the blind man, uh -huh. uh, and they asked the blind man, were you born blind? And they, and the, they asked the parents as well, and the parents didn't want to answer because they would have been kicked out of the church if they confessed right. Christ right. and his disciples. And so the same thing happened already to Christ and his disciples. The church that had the light was kicking Christ and his disciples out of, the, out, out of their fellowship. And the same thing happened during the so-called uh, 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 Inquisition time and before the Dark Ages. And the same thing will happen in the same time. At 529, uh, based on, uh, just, just to uh, expand a little bit on this biblical principle yeah. that Pastor Barry was talking about in Romans chapter 13. Go ahead, please. Acts 5.29? Yeah, at. The, in Acts 5.29, it yeah. said it this way. It says, then Peter, said, Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. Yeah, yeah. So, so we, yes, we will obey the government, the authorities, you know, as long as that go along with the commandments of God. And I think, uh, it, by the way, but you know, this it, goes, this can, can, can you think of this? All if right. all of us just obey these simple principles, like you say, my Professor Jones yeah. in there all the time, right. it, can you, the, the, the authority, the government won't have to do too much because there'll be no crimes. No divorce, no killings, no, no robbery, you know, stealing. I mean, you'll, you'll be in just complete peace. And yeah. so if you join Acts 5.29 with Romans 13, verse 9, mm -hmm. you'll see that Romans 13 is to, we should obey the government. Mm -hmm. that's, that's dealing with the last six commandments. Mm -hmm. The first four commandments deal with God, and Peter says we ought to be a God rather than man whenever the laws of the land violate one of the first four commandments. Amen. Amen. And if you look at and if you look at the laws of our land, laws of our land are set up to deal with how man deals with his fellow man. Yeah. But actually the last six commandments. The laws of the land aren't even supporting the last six commandments. Now no. nowadays, especially but I'm yeah. talking about as they originally were set up. And mind that, but what we're looking at here is when you say that we that we ought to obey God rather than men. Now you're dealing with the issue of liberty of conscience. Yeah. Right, right, that's right. Because this is where the line is in the sand at. Liberty of conscience is, is the freedom for one to act on what he believes from the Word of God. And I do also believe, and I want to bring it out over here now, what we were talking off the air um, sometimes. God, this verse is going to be used even when, when Satan will appear into this earth as Jesus himself, mm -hmm. and he will speak like Jesus spoke. He will do the miracle, a miracle as Jesus did miracle. He will say, I have sanctified my, my day, which is Sunday, that he will say. Remember, it's Satan doing all this. Mm -hmm. And people are going to say, oh, you, the Seventh-day Adventist believer, are saying that we, you must obey God. We got God now, let the me, person let, of Jesus. I want, I want. But that's not going to be mm -hmm. Jesus. It's going to be Satan that's going to come before well, Jesus let, let's, let's clarify that a little bit more because of yeah, the fact please. that a lot of Christians have never heard that. Okay. Not, not, you've been in a doubt. <laughs> no, that, when you talk about Satan, they, they believe Jesus is coming. Yeah. All of us believe Jesus is coming. Mm. But the Bible talks about the, the importance of how he will come. Right. Why is that important? Because there will be a counterfeit Christ at the end of time. 
And it's not just men posing to be Christ mm -hmm. or saying they're Christ. There's one that's going to be actually a counterfeit of Jesus Christ. I mean, Satan I, himself. Right. Now, Looking I wanna, like Jesus does in Revelation chapter 1. Right. Now, I want to oh, go, yeah. go to the Bible to see if that thing is going to be so for a moment. And then I want to share what's found in the book Great Controversy. Okay. So good. we can look at that. That little booklet right there. Can you hold it up for a minute? Yeah, of that course. That booklet right there that's going to tell you about the very events that's going to happen. But let's see, let's prove it biblically first, and then we'll see that the book is right on point for what we're talking about. Okay. Go with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, because the Bible talks about an event. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. Yeah, okay. yeah. I think that's what I want. Okay. 2, 2, 9, all right? Yep. Everybody said there? It says, listen carefully now. Uh, the Bible foresaw that there will be wickedness and iniquity, but 2.9 says, even him whose coming is after, talking about second coming of Christ, right. is after the working of Satan mm. with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Now, so the Bible says that there's a major, that we know that Satan has been working through false prophets for many ages. Mm -hmm. But the Bible foretells at the end of time that Satan will be working, there will be a, a, a greater working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. It says, and with all the feebleness of unrighteousness in them that receive not the love of the truth, they might be saved. Now, what is this marvelous working of Satan or this, this that, that, will be, that will appear just before the coming of Christ? Because this will take place, and then after this takes place, Christ's second coming is behind this. Yes, can you hold it right there? This is such an important topic. I know, as you mentioned, most Christians never heard about this, most people, that Satan will appear as Jesus, just like Jesus, before Jesus will come. And, and it's such a, because it's such an important mm -hmm. topic, we're going to pick up, just spend time in the next program, the same station, the same hour. You, you don't want to lose it. Call your friends, your family, your priest, your evangelical pastor, your rabbi, everybody, for the next time here at the Voice of the Eternal Gospel, here or nowhere. God bless you all. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com. Find out what the critics are raving about. Top scholars and theologians from around the country come together to reveal the hidden history of the book of Revelation. With powerful reenactments and incredible visual effects, this 95-minute masterpiece brings to life the book of Revelation like never before. Revelation is no longer a mystery. Get your copy today.